is us. For that sweet one drop breaking music, I can sing praises to you. Hallelujah. All right, all right. Glory, glory, glory. glory. And I thank you, Father. In the voice, so I can Lord. see so many blessings. Lord. I can count them one by one. I'm a living proof of what the Lord has done, and I can count my blessings three by three. But that would take eternity. So, Lord, I want to say thank you for that sweet one drop. A pleasant good morning to you. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. It's good to be with the people of God where we can worship and exalt God. And those of you viewing us online this morning, I must say it's good to have you. And may the blessings of God be upon you as we go through the service. Those of you visiting us this morning, it's good to have you with us this morning as we worship God and we worship Him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. Somebody say, God is a spirit. And them that worship Him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, mighty God. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is wonderful. God is glorious. We serve a mighty God. We serve the everlasting Father. He's the Prince of Peace. Let's all stand this morning as we just give ourselves to God in praise and in worship this morning. As we adore his name, as we glorify him, as we let the devil know that he is a liar. As we let the devil know that he is defeated. Somebody say, Satan, you are defeated. Somebody say, we take authority against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness. Of this world, we take authority against the spirits in the heavenlies that will try to prevent our worship to our God. We take authority over them and we declare the Lordship of Jesus Christ in this place this morning. We declare the Lordship of Jesus. In our hearts, in our lives, in our minds, in our bodies. As we worship God, we will worship him freely, without restriction. Devil, I say to you, upon the authority of the word, that you are defeated. That you are a liar. That you shall not prevail. We will worship God freely. Each and every one of us will enjoy our worship to our God. Thank you, Father. Give him praise this morning. Lift your hands and give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Turn your Bibles with me to Psalms 119. Hallelujah. God is good. And he's the same yesterday, today, and he forever will ever be the same. He's my God. He's my Lord. He's my Redeemer. He's my refuge. He's a very pleasant help. He's a very present help in times of trouble. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Psalms 119 from verse 147. You have that in your Bibles? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. I want you to read and I want you to read aloud. Hallelujah. Ah, glory to God. Forget the first word, okay? And jump unto righteous. Hallelujah. God is good. Father, we worship you, Lord. 
we worship you, mighty God. Righteous are you, O Lord. Can you say that this morning? That's right. And what? Amen. Your testimonies which you have commanded at righteous and very faithful. Read the next verse for me, please. Read it loud. Your word is very pure. Therefore, your servant loves it. Say that with me this morning. Say, your word is very pure. Therefore, I love it. Hallelujah. I am small and despised. Yet, I do not forget your precepts. Read the next verse for me, please. Hallelujah. And thy law. You see how important God's word is? You hear what it's saying? Your righteousness, it is not just for a time. We deal with people and, 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 and they, they behave nice and they behave good with us just for a time. But the word is saying, your righteousness is everlasting. It is everlasting. And it says, and your law is truth. If you're looking for truth, come into the word of God. Come into the law of the Lord. The next verse says, Trouble and anguish have overtaken me, yet your commandments are my delight. <laughs> Read the last verse for me, please. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let us let me let me say that again. Trouble and anguish have overtaken me. Yet your commandments are my delight. In spite of the troubles that I'm going through. God, I delight in your word. God, I delight in your law. God, I delight in your commandments. God, I delight in your statutes. The righteousness of your testimonies, Father, it is everlasting. And I am asking him to give me understanding and I shall live. It does not matter what the devil try. It does not matter what man say. God, give me understanding and I shall live. This reminds me of King Solomon. He said, God, all I'm asking of you is wisdom. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Somebody, you can shout to him this morning and you can say to him, give me understanding. It does not matter what you're going through. God, give me understanding. Let me understand what is happening among us and around us and in between us. Let me understand what is happening in this life in which I am living. Give me understanding. Lift your hands with me this morning as we continue to ask God to give us understanding that we may live. Hallelujah. We need an understanding. We need an understanding mind. We need an understanding heart. We need to understand what God is saying to us today. We need to understand the precepts and, and the laws of God. Father, this morning we thank you. Hallelujah. Open your mouth with me this morning and shout unto him. Shout unto him a note of praise and, and adoration and, and thanksgiving. Just, just give him thanks this morning. We bless you this morning, Father. We worship you this day, God. You are the great I am, the all-powerful, the all-nipotent. You are God all by yourself. You are, you are the all in all. You are for us all. And 
come this morning we want to give you thanks lord we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor this morning hallelujah 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 we bless you lord i will bless the lord at all times his his praise shall continually be in my mouth my soul shall make a boast in the lord somebody help me this morning and praise the lord if me we exalt the O god we exalt you lord we exalt you above the heavens we exalt you above the earth we exalt you in the earth we exalt you father wherever we are right now where we are standing lord we exalt you father we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Our soul say yes, Lord. My heart say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your ways. My heart say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and I will obey. When your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I will agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we give you thanks, Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, the first, the last, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are my God. You are my King. You are my Redeemer. You are my refuge. Thank you, Lord, this morning. We bless you, Lord. Come on, church, bless the Lord with me. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we take the authority against every wicked spirit. We take the authority against every demonic activity. We take the authority against every spirit of confusion. In the heavenlies, we pull them down to ground level. In the name of Jesus, we declare that the Lord is here. And we heard the spirit of the Lord is up. There is liberty. We thank you, Father, for transforming lives this morning. We thank you, Father, for renewing minds today. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for touching the worship, Lord. As we worship you, let us all worship you, Father, from our hearts. Because Jesus, it was Jesus who said, The hour cometh when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit. And in truth, hallelujah, we bless you this morning, Lord. We bless you this morning. We glorify you this morning. Hallelujah to the Lamb, the Lamb of God. Church, I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. Worship him this morning. Come on, worship him with me this morning. Hey, kokurabaka satararaba. He kokuraba kasantaraba. He kokurimo sheria kasantaraba. Take the authority over the spirits in the heavenlies, over the spirits in the atmosphere. Take the authority over them in the name of Jesus. Take the authority over them in the name of Jesus. Take the authority over them in the name of Jesus. Yes, over the spirits in Ukraine, over the spirits in Dominica, over the spirits wherever they are. Take the authority over them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We exalt your name, Jesus. Oh, great you are. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Take the authority. Take the authority over the spirits in Dominica. Take the authority over the spirits in Watton River. In this community, take the authority over the spirits that, that roam the atmosphere in our country. In the name of Jesus, at this time, at this time, take the authority, church. It's our authority he has given unto us the authority he says all power is given unto us in heaven and in earth and therefore we take that authority this morning in the name of jesus and we tear down we pull down we destroy every yoke of darkness every plan of the wicked one the devil we say devil you are defeated devil you are a liar devil you shall not prevail in the name of jesus We bless you this morning, Father. We bless you this morning, Father. We bless you this morning, mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, Lord. 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 We bless you, Lord, this morning. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Church, take the atmosphere, take the authority, take the authority against the spirits in the atmosphere. Take the authority against the spirits uh, that roam the atmosphere, that roam our surroundings. Uh, take the authority in the name of Jesus. Take the authority in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Take the authority, church. Take the authority, church. Uh, take the authority, church. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Take the authority over every wicked spirit. Uh, take the authority against every demonic activity. Take the authority against every oh Korabaka, every false spirit in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, no weapon formed against us this morning shall prosper, and every tongue that rises, they shall be destroyed, they shall be condemned. In the name of come on, take the authority, church. Take the authority that belongs to you. In Jesus, every one of you, take the authority in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. La raba raba sa ta ta ta, oto robo koko shata ta raba ba, he koko raba kasa ta rebo koko rima, shiri ya kasa ta raba ba kasa ndoroboi, he koko raba kaka ndio krese teri raba, he shike kiri he, he koko raba kike si raba, he shete te come on, come on, come on if you come on, let us take the authority, let us take the authority, every one of you, let us take the authority, let us take the authority against every false spirit, every demonic activity that roam our atmosphere. In the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. Those of you that can speak in your note, come and flow, flow in your note. In the name of Jesus, let us destroy yokes, let us destroy bondages, let us remove barriers, let us remove things that are not supposed to be in the atmosphere above us that is trying to hinder our worship, hinder our praise, hinder our adoration. Let us deal with them. Let us take the authority over them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Let's break them, let's break them, let's break them. Let's destroy them, let's pull them down. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Katata, Bototo, Ekokuraba, Eshetetiraba, Satara, Botoreba, Narabo, Esheria, Kasaraba, Ehe, Araba. Come on, let's worship God, let's worship God. Every one of us, every one of us, let's worship Him this morning. Let's give Him worship, let's give Him adoration. Yes, let's reach out, let's reach out, reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. You will find His not to be easy to hear your cry he's passing by this very moment your needs to supply reach out reach out reach out and touch the lord this morning somebody reach out and touch him this morning somebody reach out and touch the lord this morning as he goes by as he goes by you will find he's not to be easy you'll find he's not to be easy to hear your cry i don't know what you're going through i don't know your situation but this morning i want you to reach out and to touch him this morning i want you to reach out and to touch him this morning in the name of jesus in the name of jesus just continue to worship god in this place hallelujah his presence is in our midst today Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your power. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for your Hallelujah. Anointing. Thank you, Lord, for your power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. We plead the power of Jesus all over this place. 
Let God cover us under your blood. Cover us under your anointing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, precious Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Just continue to give the God, Lord, a, a round of praise, a voice of praise. Let's cry out to our God. Cry out to our King. We serve a God. He is King of all kings. Thank you, Jesus. He reigns over all, every war, every trial, every, every plague in the name of Jesus. We serve a God that's above it all. By His stripes we are healed. By his nailed, pierced hands, we are free. Thank you, precious Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Hallelujah. We thank you for your presence in this place, precious Jesus. Hold off on the music a while. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Let's continue to give God a praise. The presence of our God is in our midst. Take advantage of the opportunity of the presence of God among us thank you lord thank you lord for your presence today just worship god just give him all the praise all the glory all the honor that he deserves he has brought us through another week we can lift up our hands in his presence and give him praise thank you jesus Thank you, everlasting God. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord. He's here, the presence of the Lord is here. Just worship him in this place today. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. So many people wish they had this opportunity to feel the presence of God, the anointing of God in our midst. We serve a great God. We serve a glorious God. Mighty God. Never take for granted the opportunity that He has graced us with to fill us with His presence. Hallelujah. To fill us with His anointing. We take it for granted. Hallelujah. We take it for granted Hallelujah. how the Spirit of God moves Jesus. and His authority in this place. Thank you, precious Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Hallelujah. God, God. Thank you precious Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, God. Let's worship Him in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give our God a round of praise. Amen. In this place. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. We serve a great God. We serve a glorious God. We serve a righteous God. He promises that He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. We serve a God that will never lie. Word is yea and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, God. 
let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise. Let the praises of our King. Let the praises of our King. Thank you, Lord. Rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory. Let the glory.
worship you only, oh God. There's no one else before you, God. There is no one else above you, Lord. We pour our praise to you, Almighty God. We pour our praise to you, Almighty King. To you only, oh God. To you only, Lord. To you only, Lord. For you are holy. You are might. You are glorious. You are great, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, precious God. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord, only in this place, Lord. We worship you only. We bow down before you, Almighty God. We bow down before you, Almighty King.
God, we believe in you, precious Jesus. We believe in you for the impossible. We believe in you to move every mountain that is standing in our way. Jesus, thank you, thank you, Lord. We believe in you, oh God, for every challenge we may face, every hardship, every burden we cast our fears upon you, Lord Jesus. We cast our burdens on you, Lord.
Thank you, Jesus. We believe, we believe in you, in you Lord. We believe in you, Lord. We believe in you, Jesus. We believe your word, Hallelujah, Lord. We believe in you, Lord. We believe in you, Lord. We believe in you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, hallelujah Lord, oh, 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 hallelujah Lord, we believe in you Lord, we believe, oh, we believe in you Lord, thank you Jesus, yes we believe Lord. Love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. The God we believe. Jesus. We believe in you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. I will. And adore you. Hallelujah. We just want to tell you how much we love you, Lord. How much we love you, Jesus. How much we love you, God. How much we adore you in this place, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. You deserve all the glory. All the honor, all our love, all our praise is to you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Continue to give him praise, give him glory, give him your honor. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Glory be to the name of our King, the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, it's Lord, Lord.
just want to say that I love you more than anything. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Love you more, more than, than anything. anything. Hallelujah. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Oh, yes, Lord. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I just want to say that I. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Come on, tell it to him one more time. I just want to say that I. Just wanna say that I Love you more than anything. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands unto him this morning. Amen. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. What can surpass my love towards you? Nothing. Nothing should, should be able. More than anything. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This time I want you to come and give your offering, your tithes, your gifts unto the Lord. I'm sure the Lord have blessed us this morning. And those who may not have to give this morning, our prayers that God will make way, God will provide, God will open doors, that as he have blessed and prospered us, that we would be faithful and grateful to come and give unto the Lord from that which he have blessed us with. So come this morning and give with a cheerful heart unto the Lord. Amen. I just wanna say that I love you more than anything, Lord. I just wanna say that I love you more than anything. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I just wanna say that I love you more than anything. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I just wanna say we love you, Lord. Love you more more than anything. More than anything else in this world. We love you, Jesus. Love you more than anything. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Hallelujah, Lord. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you Just want to tell you Lord, I love you more than anything I love you, Jesus I worship and adore you Just want to tell you Lord, I love you more than I love you, Jesus. We worship and adore you today, Jesus. I worship for everything you have done for us. Just for bringing us through yet another week. Lord, I love you for protecting us from war. Thank you, Jesus. For protecting us from harm. For taking us to and from safely, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For protecting us against sickness and disease. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. Just worship and adore him today. We have health, we have strength, we have life. There's more than enough reason. Thank you, Lord. More See, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. More than anything. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. 
I just want to say, I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Father, we bless you this very moment, Lord. We bless you. We thank you for your loving kindness that is better than life. And this very moment, oh God, we stand before you requesting your blessings upon every giver here today. Oh God, those who gave out of the needs, Lord, you know exactly what to do. Those who gave Father, out of the abundance, Lord, you know just what to do. Those, oh God, who gave from their heart really did not have anything, but they gave anyhow. Father, you know just what to do. So we are requesting your blessings today upon everyone, Lord. Those that really wanted to give but did not have. Lord, we ask for your supply. Constant supply in the name of Jesus we thank you for breaking through Lord removing hindrances and barriers Lord mountains that seem so high destroying negative declaration over our lives as we oh God move oh God forward to declare the positive Lord we ask holy God that you will intervene in our lives this very moment we give you thanks for doing great things we give you thanks for those who use it will use it for your glorification for your upliftment lord in this nation and in the nations of the world we give you thanks and we give you praise and the people of god say together amen and amen god bless you hallelujah thank you jesus I just want it. How much than everything? I just want to say, love you more than anything. Hallelujah. Love you. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. I just want to say, I love you more than anything. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Amen. Bless the Lord this morning. He's faithful to us. Thank him for his mercies. His goodness towards us. He's great. Hallelujah. Again, we want to say welcome to you. Those of you who are here and those of you who are viewing us wherever you are. We say welcome again to our service here at the Warden Raven Pentecostal Church. May you be blessed as you receive from the Lord. Amen. Our announcement for the week is on Tuesday night at 7.30 as usual. We have our prayer meeting for the whole entire church. Every single member of the church are to be in prayer meeting. We are not in church this week, but we are online. So please click in and join our prayer meeting. And on Thursday night, there will be a meeting for the cleaners. Those who minister in cleaning the church. Amen. There, there, there's going to be a meeting for you on Thursday night at 7.30. So all the cleaners... You are asked to be there. Amen. And members, you are please asked to join. Join. Take note, we are using Zoom. <coughs> so click onto the members chat to get the ID, <coughs> which is 322 or 6541, and the passcode is capital T, Q, C, capital W, 35. By now, I'm sure everybody has that. 
And please check the members' chat for more information on what is happening in the church. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all leaders, again, are encouraged to make a special effort to lead by example and be involved in our weekly services or weekly activities. Amen? Praise the Lord. Now let's do our declaration of faith. Please stand to your feet. Amen. Ready? One, two. By faith, we declare that revival is coming this way. A new wind is blowing, bringing life to every dead thing. The unrighteous will be saved. God's spirit will move in the land. This whole land shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. And in the midst of the years, the Lord will revive his work. We believe and confess that the hold of evil forces on people is being broken and they are being delivered from the power of evil. Men and women will yield more to the spirit of the Lord. The church will come alive from spiritual deadness to a glorious church full of his presence. I believe and confess that Watton Waven is a fruitful place. Our church is experiencing supernatural harvest. The ground is softened up for the seed of the word of God. Every seed we sow will bring forth fruit. Men and women will come to the knowledge of the Lord. The fallow grounds will break up to new life. New growth will spring forth. The harvest will be plenteous. The hearts of men will be turned to the Lord. What and Waven will be filled with the knowledge of God. What and Waven shall be and will be saved. In Jesus' name. Amen. Every member of your family will be saved in Jesus' name. Your neighbors will be saved. Amen. Because you will attract them to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Right now, I want you to put your hands together as we welcome our pastor, Reverend Brian Jeffrey Xavier, to come and minister to us the word of God this morning. Come on, give God praise. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody shout praise the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. Say it with me. His mercies endures forever. Hallelujah. Come on, say it with me. His mercies endure forever. Uh, you may be seated this, this afternoon. Our God is an awesome God. He is glorious. He's the mighty one. He's the everlasting father. He is the prince of peace. And I love his government. Some people don't like it, but I love his government. His government is the best. Huh? His government will not dictate to you what to do, what not to do. It will not dictate to you where to go, where not to go. If you give your life to Jesus, he still will not dictate to you. He just gives you his word. He says, this is my word follow it and you still have the choice whether you want to follow it or not he will not come and put a gun there by your head and tell you i say follow it he won't i love his government it is the best hallelujah uh, i must say uh welcome those of you who are visiting with us today it's good to have you visiting with us in the house and online, it's good to have you. Put your hands together for those online. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have persons online visiting, um, sharing our services with us. Uh, we have our members out there. Sister Shana, we sh give you a shout. But Ross is not with us this morning. We can give him a shout too. Sister Lisa and all the others. Hallelujah. We have persons in Texas with the Damier. We have those in China. We have those where again? In England? In total, yeah. We have the Caesars in total that always uh, follow up for us. Amen? That's why we have to always have that thing flowing. Amen? We always have to because we have members out there who uh, hooked up and tuned, turn, up, turn on to our services every Sunday morning. 
a worship service in the world. So we want to welcome you. The young people will say we want to dig you up. <laughs> we want to dig you up over there, man. Oh, big you up. Oh, big you up. I said dig you up. Uh, so you see, I really not that old, young, right? <laughs> I'm getting older and older. I can't even follow this slang these days. I'm going to pick you up, man. I was wondering why dig you up anyhow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Our God is a mighty God. Hallelujah. So I must learn some more young, new, new, new young slangs. New young slangs. I must learn them so I can pick you up somewhere over there. Hallelujah. Don't forget our prayer meeting online this week. And our cleaners, including those that prepare and take care of the cleaners, we would like to meet with you right here in church on Thursday night. I serve a great God. This morning, I want to speak with you for a few minutes uh, from the Word of God. I want to it mentioned the believer's commitment to Christ, which of course is very important for each and every one of us. We, we are, as individuals, we commit to different things. We commit to our jobs and to some persons, you can't touch that. Don't touch that. Don't touch my job. That's my livelihood. And I understand that. I understand some of us, we have mortgages. Or we have our cars to pay. We have our, our elderly mother and father to take care of. And, um, or we have a job and we do not want people to touch that. Because uh, this is very important for our livelihood. Uh, we can't do what we want without, without that form of our livelihood. And um, it is important for us. As believers to understand that but your commitment to your livelihood is important and to many of us we commit to it as much as possible amen we commit to it a great deal we commit to our wives our husbands we commit to our children we commit to our fathers and our mothers. We commit to basically everything that we benefit from on this earth. Am I here? Are you hearing me? We commit even to the people that we think that cherish us a great deal. We just commit. But I love when Jesus made this great, astounding statement in Luke chapter 14. And um, from verse 25, he said, And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, I want you to take note that the multitude was great. A great multitude. You think of a multitude. And, and sometimes we don't have to say it is great. We just use the word multitude. And we think of a lot of people. And, and, and the Bible is saying that a great multitude followed him. My question to each and every one of us here today is why were the multitude following Jesus? Why? What was the reason for following Jesus? But Jesus was so discerned. And, and he discerned the multitude 
And he shouted out. I know they didn't have microphone at the time, but his voice was powerful enough to attract the ears of every individual in that multitude. And he said, if any man, that any man speaks of the pastors, the prophets, the apostles, the teachers, He said, if any man, it speaks of the members. Those who were saved and not saved. Those who just followed him because they saw the crowd following him. Those who felt, let us take a walk because everybody going that, that, that direction. So let us go that, that, that direction. You know, a lot of times we, we, we go directions because everybody going there, right? See? Everybody going down there. Let's go down there, lime man. Down there is the place of lime in you know, because everybody down there. So they followed him. They followed the crowd. But he shouted. Or he said. If any man will come to me. And hate not his father and his mother. And his wife and his children. And his brethren and sisters. Yea. And even his own life. Also. He said, he cannot be my disciples. That was astonishing. That is interesting. That's, that's information to cause me to think. What is Jesus saying? Jesus, you're saying to me, the woman that bore me, the father that raised me up, the sisters and the brothers that gave me the support in times of crisis when I was not doing well, when things were not going well for me, you, you were saying to me, hit them. And the own colloquial term, it was the pastor that said that, you see, that pastor is mad. Wouldn't you? Huh? Because it's in the Bible, you don't say yes. But if it was the pastor that tell you, hate your brother and your sister, you'd say he mad. Jesus said, hate. Wow, hate. And he's saying, you can't be my disciple. He wants you to be his disciple, but in order for you to be his disciples, he's saying to you, you can't love your father and mother and everybody and still love me. He said, no, 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 no. It's like he's saying, a fountain cannot bring forth sweet and bitter water at the same time. It's like saying, you can't love the world and love the father. You can't love the world and love God. You, 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 your love has to be focused on him and him alone. That, that's the reason why when you come to worship, you can't be focusing on the pot that's on the fire that might be burning and still focus on God. You cannot do that. It won't work. You can't be focusing on the front room of God and still focusing on everything that is happening around you. That's one of the reasons why we sometimes ask persons to close your eyes and let's worship God. Because we are trying to eliminate the distractions that your eyes will see. And when your eyes see distractions, it prevents you from worshiping, from committing your worship to the Lord. And that's the reason why he says to us that we have to forget the world. Leave the world alone and serve him. Because in the world there is a lot of distraction. And let me tell you something. Uh, people tell you in the world have got nothing to answer uh, to offer them. I tell you they lie. Well lie. Well, well, well lie. And most times those people are telling you will have got nothing to offer them. When they go back out there and enjoy what they will have to offer. <laughs> they lying, lying, lying. <laughs> All their teeth lying. They 
they will have so much to offer. Plenty. And because Jesus is aware that there is a lot out there to offer, he is saying to you, let me tell you something, you have to. And he brought it so close home. He brought it home to you and he tell you, hey, Jesus did not literally, he's not speaking literally about hating your father and their mother. He, what he's actually saying to you, if you cannot forsake them for my sake, you cannot be my disciples. If you have a choice between me and your mother or your father or your brother and your sisters and you cannot pull them or push them on the side and take over and take me to be yours, then you cannot be my disciples. One man, he, he was asked a question. If your mother and your wife is drowning, who, which one will you save? His wife asked him that question. <laughs> he, he looked at his wife and he said, but you! He said, me? You lie. She said, yes. Why me? He said, you are the mother of the best things that I have. You are the one that have been there for me. I know my mother made me. But you are the one that will be there with me for life. And he gave her a lot of information that proves to her that she would be the person that he would save. Now to some of us we will say, what boy? You and my mother... I can get another wife, but I can't get another mother. Isn't that so? I can get another wife, but I can't get another mother. And some of us have that concept. I can get another Christ, but I can't get another mother. I can get another this, but I can't get another father. Hmm? And Jesus said to us, leave your father and your mother and cleave. It didn't tell you let go. Cleave. And, and we misunderstand the uh, concept of cleave. Cleaving speaks of commitment. You know you never commit to your mother and father? You know my children never commit that you are my mother and you are my father and I commit my life to you? No, they never did that. No. One said to me, you brought me into the world so you have to take care of me. Ah, isn't that true? Yes. You brought me into this world. You have to take care of me until I am able to take care of myself. And some of them, when they're able to take care of themselves, they still depend on you to take care of them. That's children for you. But Jesus is, is speaking to us on a different level. And he's saying to you, you need to learn. You need to make up that, your mind and, and, have, and make that commitment to forsake your sister, forsake your brother, forsake the one that is giving you financial aid for me. That's hard. What are you talking about? And, and that's one of the reasons why... Um, and, and let me tell you, believers, sometimes we fight with, 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 with people when they get saved. And we figure, you know, before we used to say, hey, you have to leave that man you have there if you want to serve God, yeah? I can remember growing up when they used to say that. You have to leave that person that you are with there. Leave his house. Yet God will provide for you. And you, if, if you want to serve God. They were not wrong. They were not wrong. It is today we have it so, I mean scientific that we want to put all kinds of little e's and r's and god understands in between his love for you and your love for him and we try to decorate everything and turn the scriptures to suit our condition. But Jesus is saying, if you cannot forsake your father, your mother, your boyfriend, your sister, your husband, your wife, if you cannot forsake these people for my sake, he's saying to you, you cannot be my disciple. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Do I want to serve God? The scripture is not literally telling us to hate our father 
or our mother. It's not saying to hit them. No. Jesus is not expecting you to hit your mother or to hit your father. No. He is saying to you that you have to make a choice between me and your father and a mother whom you will serve. Well, I've made that choice years ago. God bless my father, God bless my mother. But they can't give me eternal life. Are you hearing me? You see, because from the time they, from the time I was conceived, I reach in a position or in a place, let me say it again, in a place that is called eternity. So now I am living in eternity. But I am living in eternity in a physical body. Just waiting for that physical body to disappear. And to go back to the dust. And let me tell you, and I have said before, and I will say it to you again. When the physical body goes back to the dust, that's not when eternity starts. It starts from conception. So God wants you to prepare while you are in that physical body for what is to come for you in eternity. Don't sit there and say, well, well, there are certain persons that will go to heaven and there are certain persons that will go to hell. So if I'm not supposed to go to heaven, then I'll go to hell. Well, if that's the choice, my friend, God bless you. I don't know if there's a blessing from God for that one, but I'm saying to you, God bless you. Committing to God should be your number one thing. Committing to God should be on your mind. Committing to God should be in your heart. Committing to God should be that which you look forward to. Remember, I make mention of Abraham. And I do not want to get out of it. I want to stay there with Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, I want you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 12. When God said to Abraham, get out of your country. Now, hear this. If I would come here and say to any of you, leave your community and go. Pastor, where? I really don't know as yet. But by midnight tonight, you should leave. Where am I going? Am I going north, south, east, or west? I honestly don't know, but leave. You're not ready as yet. You need to have a plan. When you tell me leave, if you want me to, if you want me to go north, you will say, leave, go north. I will take care of you when you go north. God said to Abraham, leave. Leave your father, leave your mother, leave your brothers, leave your sisters, leave your comfort. Why would God tell Abraham leave? Because Abraham was committed to God. Are you hearing me, church? Are you hearing me? Abraham was committed to God. Some of us, if the, if the pastor or a little church leader tell you um, which they want you in church at the 4 o'clock this afternoon and you know you have to do something at 4 o'clock at home, you say, Pastor, forget it. Where can I make it? I understand that uh, you, you have to put your family, uh, not first, God first, but you have to put your family there, a second. But you say, Pastor... Uh, you know, ministry is not before my family. I say, I understand. But you know, the pastor gets directives. And he's asking you to be there. You see, because, and Jesus knows that so well. That's why he asked us to leave. And that's why he told Abraham to leave. Abraham, leave. Because, because family always become an obstacle in the way for doing things for God. Family always become an obstacle. There are pastors who push the family aside. That's not good. 
but you have to weigh between the balance what is and what is not you cannot push your family on a side for ministry's sake but for god's sake yes you can push him on the side so god said to abraham leave go to a land that i will show you he said to him not only will i show you that land but i will make you a great nation i will bless you i will bless the people who bless you i will curse the people who curse you i will make your name great among the nations of the earth it's a blessing that abraham he looked forward to and to many of us we would appreciate if if god would say that to us hey go i will make you great god i love that great part you see the part that called great i love it god make me great leaving my father and my mother god i can go with them god can i go with my sisters and my brothers God gave Abraham the permission to go with his wife. And not only his wife, but he went with his nephew, Lot. <laughs> Believers, I am speaking to you this morning. I want you to understand the type and kind of commitment that God is looking for from us as individuals. He does not want our love for him to be tampered with by anyone, not even your wife or your husband. My wife loves God more than me. Oh God, help me. Go ahead, my wife loves him more than me. Because I know he will always direct you to me. Are you understanding me? The more God will not mislead you. He will not show you the wrong way to go. He will bless you if you love him. The more you love God, it is the more God is going to shower his blessings upon you. The more you put him first. Believers, when you come to church, it is not a time to be thinking of your wife or your children at home. Let me tell you, believers, there are times when you have to say to children, now is not my time for you. Now is not your time. Now is God's time. You never, there are times when you have to say to your wife or to your husband, it is not your time now. It is God's time. My life uh, depends upon the blessings of God. What God can do for me. You cannot do it. You know, sometimes we're at home and we're thinking of the service and, and, and then sometimes, even this one, my wife was wondering, what going to happen? What going to happen? I said, hey, it's not your church. Leave it alone. I said, let it go. It's not your church. I try not to do that. It's not my church. I cannot do it. <laughs> the children, they ought to, Dominica, they ought to stay like they, there's somewhere else I'm going to worry about where they, what they're doing, where they're doing, where they're going, what not. No, 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 that's not my job. <laughs> my job is to serve my God. My job is to lift up my hands and say, thank you, Jesus. My job is to worship God. You think I'm going to worry about Rhea, what Rhea is doing now? No. I have a God that will take care of my needs when I take care of what I'm supposed to take care for him. You don't doubt your God. You commit to your God. Commit your ways to the Lord. And what he will do? He will direct your path. Are you there with me this morning? You fail to commit, you won't get direction. You think I'm going to worry about my wife during the daytime where she go, what she doing and those kind of things there? You think thoughts doesn't come? Huh? It comes. But if I walk faithfully, if I walk before God with an upright heart, I know that he will take care of things. 
what happens in the sick in secret places if i walk upright he's going to reveal it to me church let me tell you something if you are messing it up and i know that i'm walking upright before god he's going to show me who is messing it up this is church i am happy to be his servant I am happy to be his child. But for him to direct me, I must commit my ways. I must commit my behavior, my attitude. I must commit everything that I have to him. I should not take my wife as my God. Everything my wife, my wife, my wife. Well, God fitting fit in, fit in into there. Everything, my wife, my wife, my wife. Where is God? I have to put God in his place. My wife has a place. God has his place. God is first. And he should be first in each and every one of us life. God give you directives. And you're saying, God, you know, God, I understand, you know, I should be there at that time. But God, you know, my wife is over there and my wife did that, you know, God, I have to go and deliver. You know what God said to this young prophet? He said to this young prophet, I want you to go. Go on a mission for me and, 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 and don't stop to talk to anybody. Don't, 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 don't take no directives from anybody. And, and when God says anybody, he's not, he's not speaking about somebody's and some persons who uh, have titles. You know, some people have titles and they think that they're above everybody else. Huh? I am the mayor. So, mayor, you're breaking the law. What do you think I should do to you? Oh, mayors will break the law. Because the mayors are the law. Who says so? You, you know, sometimes we think that as, 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 as persons with title that we can walk into churches and, and, and just shake our shoulders and, and everybody just stand attention and say, oh, the pastor, the prophet is here. Uh, people, the prophet is here. Let him, and the prophet come around and he do what he wants and we just say, it's the prophet. And, and, and we are in awe oh, of the prophet. No. Everyone is subject to the Lord of God. It does not matter even if you're a pastor or a prophet or whatever, apostle. It does not matter what position you hold in the, in the church or in society. When you come in the house of God, when you come in the presence of God, you have to be in subjection to the presence of God and to the leadership of God. That's what commitment is all about. Committing your ways to the Lord and he directs your path. So he said to Abraham, go. Abraham went, not knowing where he was going. And God brought him and his wife to Canaan. God brought him there. God bless him. And he and Lot was expanding so much that uh, lot abraham realized that there would be a level of confusion a level of trouble so abraham said to lot my brother my friend my cousin my nephew choose choose which path you want to go you know when you start expanding when you commit to god and god start blessing you you, you cannot stay the same way something happened something happened you start bless god blessing you start increasing in blessing he said to lord choose I, I i'm just sitting there and i want you to choose decide which path you take in and take and go and i will go there while you go there and lord decided he's going one way but lord was not committed to god like abraham was it's like in Jeremiah where God says to us, before you were formed in, in, in the womb, I, I knew you. Not only I knew you, but I also sanctify you. I clean you. I wash you up. I, I make you clean. I, 
I, I prepare you. I prepare you to be a blessing, not not just to not just to the people around you, but to nations of the world. And church, you need to understand that the blessings of God will come upon you when you commit your ways to the Lord. Commit your ways to God. He is going to direct you. He is going to minister to you. In Psalms chapter 73 and verse 25. The psalmist asks, Whom have I in heaven but thee, O Lord? And there is none upon the earth that I desire. Besides thee, can we, like the psalmist, say the same thing? Who have I, who do I have in heaven but you? And who do I desire upon the earth? God, wait a while. Desire upon the earth? God, you know I have a husband. God, you know I have a wife. God, you know I have children. God, you know I have these girlfriends. I have these boyfriends. God, you know, I mean... God, you understand that we are flesh and you know the flesh always wants something. But that was not the cause of, or, the, or the case or, or the cry of, 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 of the psalmist. He says, my flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. It does not not matter how you feel your flesh will always want something that is contrary to the word of God but you as an individual you have to stand your ground and say doth save the Lord flesh I put you under subjection you shall be under subjection let God reign let God rule let God be the one in control of my life and in verse 27 it says, For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a warring from thee. But it is a good, but it is good for me. Somebody say it is good for me. Come and say it is good for me. To draw near to God. Come and say it to draw near to God. I will put my trust in the Lord. You will put your trust. You will put your confidence. You will commit your ways to the Lord. Hallelujah. And as we commit our ways and our, and our confidence in the Lord, I know that the Lord will take care of us. He will. He has promised. He said, I will never leave you. Nor will I forsake you. Let's all stand this morning or this afternoon. I will never leave you. Neither will I forsake you. Commitment. It separates. Commitment. It separates doers from dreamers. There are people who dream but they don't do. One man said it is important for us to note that the scripture never speaks of education. But the scripture speaks of dreamers. Uh -huh. And he said, you encourage people to dream. The more you encourage people to dream, the more of these people will be educated. Are you hearing me? Dreamers become educators. The scripture speaks of dreamers. Joseph was a dreamer. He dreamt. 
That's what I want to. That's what I will become. And not everybody accept and respond to your dreams. Because sometimes your dreams are so high that people think that your dream is only to belittle them. And that's how Joseph's brothers felt. That his dream was always about him and how high he will become in life and 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 it it, it have them like they, they become servants to him so they could not respond to his dream to some of you god placed upon you within you dreams but in order for your dreams to be established you need to commit your life and your ways to him. Bow your heads with me. Wherever you are. If you are driving, stop. This is a very important part of your life. You need to understand that if you commit your ways to the Lord. He will direct your path. To some of you, you are going through hells on earth. Let me say to you, it is just for a season. And usually to some people, it comes like waves. One wave, at, one wave, another wave at a time. One wave come, another one come. And it comes as like waves. When one come, another one comes. Waves, waves. And sometimes your wave can be really shallow waves. And sometimes your wave can be really high and rough waves. To some of us, we face these things differently. But I'm here to say to you that God wants you to commit your ways to Him. And as you commit your ways to Him, He is going to take care of those waves. It does not matter what they look like, how tall they are, or how low they are. He is right there in the boat to take care of you. Father, I thank you. I thank you for each and every individual that is listening to your word through me today. I ask you, Holy Spirit, that you will break through for every life, for every heart, for every mind, through it all. We will learn to trust in Jesus. We will learn to trust in God. In spite of the situation that this brother, sister, whoever the person is, is facing today, they will learn to trust in you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. Father, I ask that you minister to these persons right now in the name of Jesus. I give you thanks. I give you praise. There are many of you here today. You might be in the church. You might be at your home. And you're saying, Pastor, I have heard the word. I have heard the word. You have spoken to me. You have spoken to my heart. You have spoken to my spirit. And God is speaking to me, Pastor. I felt that level of conviction. I want really to commit my ways and my actions, my behavior to God today. I want to commit my life to the Lord today. I want you to pray with me today. If you're like that, wherever you are, if you're in your vehicle, I know, you know, I will not see you, but you can just lift your hands. God will see. If you're in the church, just lift your hands and I will see you. Thank you. Anybody else, lift your hands. Don't be afraid. Lift your hands. Lord, I want to commit my ways to you. I want to commit my ways and my actions to you. I'm asking you, God, to speak to me. Oh, korabasata ramoshe boy. In the name of Jesus. Those of you who lift your hands, I want you to say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father. And church, join us too. Say, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, I come to you. Lord, I ask you to forgive me. Not some but all my sins. Cleanse me. Wash me. Make me your child today. Lord, I commit myself to you. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart. 
make me your child. I want to serve you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my mind. I commit myself this very moment to you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for receiving me in the name of Jesus. I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord. I receive you as my personal Savior. Lord Jesus, set me free. Set me free. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Father, I thank you for each and every individual that have committed their lives to you. Totally and completely. I present them to you, Father. I ask you, Lord, that you will break, bowl, and fashion them. Not after my choice or my will, but after yours. Oh God, be their God. Be their Savior. Be their protector. Be their shield. Be their strong tower. Be their refuge. Oh God, you declare that you are a very present help in times of trouble. So I'm asking you very this very moment, Lord, that you will reach out to them, Lord God. As they reach out to you, as they have committed their lives to you, I'm asking you, Father, that you reach out to them and touch them. Touch them, Father. Touch them in a supernatural way, Lord. Touch them in a way that they have never experienced a touch before. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, I thank you, Father, for doing great things in their lives and in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you have committed your ways to the Lord, I want to encourage you to find a church. A church wherein you can hear the word of God, the uncompromising word of God, the word of truth. Not a church that will teach you different foolishness that is not scriptural, but a church that will teach you the word of God in truth. In truth. The word of God that is life and health. The word of God that produces life and gives wisdom. Get a church that teaches this thing. Amen. Thank you, Father. Just lift your hands with me. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father, for your word. I thank you, Father, for your grace. Your grace that is indeed sufficient. Thank you, Father, for your strength that have been made perfect. In our weakness and this very moment father i present your people before you lord each and every one here today your word makes it so clear to us lord god that you you will give your angels charge over them and over us your angels will keep us in all our ways we thank you your word it also says that if we dwell in your secret place and if we abide under the shadow of the almighty the psalmist says i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress teach us oh god as we go through the week as we go through the days how to abide under your shadow how to abide in the holy place instead of getting ourselves hooked up with Father, the things that are secular will make time for you and abiding in the secret place and dwelling in the secret place. You declare that if we dwell in the secret place, you will deliver us from the snare of the fowler, from the perilous pestilence. You will cover us with your feathers. And you said, under your wings, we will take refuge. This day, I declare as we go through this week, that we, O oh God, will take refuge in you. I declare, Father, that you will cover us with your wings or with your feathers. I thank you that your truth shall be our shield. Hallelujah. And our buckler. Father, to some of us, we lie a lot. But I declare this very moment, as we go through this week, 
will understand that truth your word is truth you are truth and you, your word will change our behaviors and our attitudes to that which satisfies you so i declare upon the authority of your word that no evil shall befall us neither shall any plague come near our dwelling i declare father that we shall not go hungry no we shall not faint for lack of food i declare that we will be filled i declare we will have plenty i declare this very moment oh god that you will take care of our going out and our coming in in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit i declare your blessings upon each and every one of us here today as we go may you protect us totally and completely let your word guide us all through i release our angels around us to take charge of us lest we dash our foot against the stone holy spirit take control full control in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit bless our children lord bless our brothers and our sisters our husbands and our wives bless those who are not here today those oh god who wanted to be here but cannot be here bless them and make each and every one of us be a blessing to others as we go through this week in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit i declare it upon our lives in jesus name and the people of god say together amen and amen and amen hallelujah god bless you take your right hand do as we are custom of doing put it on your left shoulder come on let's do that our covid our covid hug and i want you to squeeze pull it pull it can you feel my hug to you this morning or this afternoon if you're not feeling it it's because you're not doing it god bless you have a blessed sunday have a blessed time in the presence of god amen praise god god bless you <laughs>